Well, good day to everybody, and welcome to Noodling 101, the very uh, first uh, noodling song I think we're going to talk about. So when I talk about noodling on the guitar, I think about just things that come to you while you're while you're playing, uh, tunes that end up getting a little bit stuck in your head, things that. Uh, uh, you you want to begin with just exploring the fretboard a little bit, and then along the way, you maybe add a few things to it, uh, actually bring it into something that you can actually play that's got a little bit of structure to it, right? Now, none of this has to be perfect. It's noodling, and we're not doing this for a living. We're doing this for fun. We're just enjoying it. We're not expecting anybody to write us a check. Uh, we're not looking to end up on the Ed Sullivan Show. I guess maybe Ed Sullivan's maybe not maybe the right one these days, but uh, I barely remember him myself. But uh, but you get the idea. Uh, we're we're here to have a little fun, make a little music, enjoy a Sunday afternoon on the back porch, that kind of thing. So this particular noodling session. Uh, really only requires that you have a little bit of finger control. So is it a finger style guitar? I would call it finger style, but I would say that it's a finger style that I think anybody that can make chords can learn. Okay, so you saw the opening or heard the opening, uh, and this was one that... Uh, you know, you, you think a lot of times, well, I'm, I'm coming up with something original here. Well, this really sounds good. Or, you know, probably not so much most of the time. If you think about all the music you've heard over your whole entire life, uh, a lot of times <clears throat> you're very close to a another song that's out there that's being done at the moment, okay? Or has been done in the past, let's say. And, and what's really happening is, is you get all these things in your head and they begin to float around a little bit. And the next thing you know, you think you've been come up with some new song, <laughs> for lack of or some new tune, when the reality is uh, this somebody else may have played this tune 10 years ago, and for some reason it's popping back up in your head. So I'm very careful about those kinds of things. I will say that uh, depending upon the style of music, one of the one of the dangers you run into when you're, uh, when you're trying to be a professional noodler, <laughs> or you're trying to be, when I say professional, I don't really mean you're getting paid for it, but but you just enjoy developing things, right? And stringing things together and kind of connecting a few dots. Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. So as you're beginning the process of developing some tunes in your head and trying to get that translated into and out of the guitar... Always keep that in mind. There's there's parts of that tune that, I mean, what causes us or enables us to be able to draw on some of these things is the fact that we've heard something similar along the way. So when I hear something like this, and I certainly wouldn't want to offend Ry Cooter in any way, but I kind of think of his style of music, I guess. Now, he does a lot of slide guitar. If you've never heard of Ry Cooter, uh, if you've seen uh, The Long Riders, for example, I believe he did a few tunes in that movie. Uh, but uh, he, he's very good with a slide guitar as well, I'm sh although I'm sure he's good at everything else he does. <clears throat> but, so the opening tune is one that I was kind of thinking about uh, over the, just the last day or so. So last night I was noodling, as I do a lot of, because after all, I'm not playing for a crowd of people in a crowded restaurant or something like that. And uh, so there's really no pressure on me from that standpoint at all. So a lot of times I'll just sit and kind of, for lack of a better word, I noodle. And every now and again, something will, something will come up. There's a, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, a tune that, uh, if I could think of what this is. There we go.
so that's one <clears throat> that I had so heard a song recently that had a similar opening to it, but it didn't quite go where I went. So I just kind of robbed a little bit from it and kind of did a little, you know, little noodling twist on it, so to speak. And it's something anybody can do if you can play guitar and you can, you know, you have some ear for music at all. I think you can develop a lot of these things. So the opening that we did on this particular one, the one you saw me doing, that's one that I was just kind of sitting as a couch potato uh, yesterday. Uh, I'd been out of, out of town on business uh, uh, for a while and hadn't picked up a guitar for at least a week. And yes, I know, I said, you need to play at least a minimum of an hour a day. But there are occasions where, you know, making a living might interfere with that. Uh, and, and, and that's okay, right? But when I got back home, the first thing I did was uh, uh, got my guitar out of the case. And then I went and hugged my wife. Uh, probably should have done that in the other order, but you get the idea. So... When when you when you look at that opening tune, I, I would like to uh, for those of you that uh, maybe you're just on your journey with a guitar, or maybe maybe you're kind of seasoned and uh, but you like that opening tune. It's not perfect. It's raw. It's very very raw. But a lot of times I I, I kind of appreciate the rawness. I like that. Uh, everything doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Now if you're if you're in a recording studio and you're trying to get things uh, right for uh, some kind of an album release or something or some kind of song release, well, yeah, you probably want to get that perfect. But for the other 99.5% of us in the world, or maybe even higher than that, we just want to enjoy ourselves with our guitar and have a good time, <clears throat> develop a few things, and along the way, uh, have some have some fun and provide a little uh, uh, something that others can play along with and that sort of thing, right? So that opening tune. And see, there's a danger when you begin to to just uh, swipe just a few notes on the guitar up, hitting more strings than what you needed to hit, right? And which just happened. The, the note that I hit that shouldn't be in there is that number three string right there. And it's open. So for most of this song, you're only swapping the bottom two strings, your string number one and your string number two. And it requires a little bit of a gentle touch, which I am not known for. So for me, it's quite a discipline. But what this kind of tune kind of reminds me of, I don't know, I'm in the mountains somewhere. It's kind of smoky up there. Maybe it's uh, it'll, it'll even take you back to the 1800s, you know, when uh, based off of some of the movies we've seen, right? So, but it's very relaxing to me and uh, just takes me somewhere. Uh, where it takes me is, you know, up for debate. <laughs> but, so I want to walk through how we played that opening tune. And I'd like for you to think about things where you can take that tune, where, places you could make it go, right? Uh, things that you could change about what we're about to do that would make it even better and maybe develop it into something for yourself. So there's uh there's no copyrights on any of this stuff. I'm not I'm not uh I'm not trying to uh uh, uh push my music out there because uh truth is I really don't have any music. I'm a noodler, right? <laughs> so uh but but this is just something that kind of relaxed me as I was playing it and then it just kind of got developed. So the first thing I want to tell you is we will use one, two, three strings one two and three but we're going to use number three string very that string right there number three we're going to use it very sparingly uh, occasionally we're going to throw in a bass note the root note for this song is e right so your bass note is that number six string on here and you may even notice along the way that the root note that e bass note is is it can be a little random from time to time and i think that's okay somebody who's a bit more of a stickler might have a different opinion but again to me that adds a little bit to the rawness as long as it's not out of time or out of step or something like that it, it generally sounds pretty good when you throw it in so this song starts out like this and we're not going to do the bass note to begin with we'll we'll run through this and then we'll go back and we'll do the bass note okay so, strings one and two. 
So I I like I like to assign my fingers to strings. Now, if if you if you've ever listened to Justin Johnson, he says God gave you five fingers, you ought to use all five of them. And I think he does that very well. I'm not one of those people. So uh, now I am one of those people God gave five fingers to, but I I don't typically use my little finger, my pinky finger on my if you're right-handed, on your right hand for picking. If you're left-handed, then on your left hand. Normally what I'll do is my my ring finger is typically, this is no rule, it's just a kind of a guide. I'll assign that to string number one. I will assign my middle finger to string number two. And I will assign my fourth finger to string number three. And then these number six, five, and four up here at the top, these are my bass notes. And I'll use my my thumb for that. So if you want me to introduce you to the band, there's my bass player right there. Okay? And then I have my kind of my lead guitarist. So I'm kind of stealing that from Toby Walker, who I heard talking about that about six months ago. He he did a video where he, he was introducing everybody to the band. It's just him and one guitar. And he's a phenomenal, phenomenal fingerstyle guitarist, especially for the blues. But uh, <clears throat> so I like string assignment for fingers. Now it's a general rule. So you'll notice in the opening tune that that song kind of did a swipe across these two bottom strings, strings one and string two. And I'm only hitting those two strings, or let me rephrase that. I should only be hitting those two strings. So along the way, we're going to mess this up. I hope you're okay with that. So the song starts out like this. Just swapping the two bottom strings. Then I take my forefinger on my left hand, if you're a right-handed guitar player, and I put it on the number one string, number two fret, second fret. One, two, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Those are... That's what we're talking about when we talk about the frets, right? And then strings one, two, from the bottom up, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I'll do is take that four finger, second fret, and then I'll do a hammer-on, what's called a hammer-on. So if, you, if you're if you unfamiliar with the term hammer-on, you're about to not be uh, unfamiliar with it. You're about to be very familiar with it. So what you do is swap the two bottom strings open, without hitting that third string. And if you just kind of rake up a little. Okay. So what I'm doing is, is I've got my fourth finger on the second fret, first string. And then I'll take my middle, my ring finger. And then I'll do a hammer on. So I'll go. Hear that? I've got, I, I have left my fourth finger in place on the first string, pressing down to make us to make the sound, and then so give that a shot. And if you're wondering, that is one, two, three, four. It's the fourth fret that I'm hammering to from the second fret on the number one string. Still swapping the two bottom strings, number one and number two. Once you hammer on, you're going to swap two more times while you're holding it down. Okay? Everybody got that? Now the next thing we're going to do is a little bit tricky. Not terribly tricky. If you've been playing for a little while or you've been doing any kind of finger style, this is not going to be tricky for you. If you're beginning to get into this and you're getting new to the game, it's going to be a little bit tricky, okay? Now, 
In other words, then you're going to pull that ring finger off and you're going to go, you're leaving your forefinger on the number two fret, number one string. I only plucked that once. Okay? So it's... You only plucked it once. All that, all, all that followed after that was just sustain, right? Everybody, everybody get that? And once you do that, it should sound like this. Not like that, like this. Now all I did was a hammer on after I after I did that on that bottom number one string. I did a hammer on on the number two string second fret. Now I only plucked with my middle finger that that second fret, second string using my middle finger on my left hand, if you're right handed, vice versa if you're not. Hear that? I swapped it a couple of times open. So let's do this together very slowly and then we'll move along. <clears throat> and you can, by the way, if you're new to this, you may have to watch this a few times and just kind of pause the video and practice it a little bit. This is probably not going to come natural if you've never tried this before. Let's start over again. I, I'm like a bull in a china closet and trying to slow this down makes it even harder for me. Now, let me see how many more excuses I can make for myself. And maybe y'all can put a few excuses for me in the comments. That would help me out. And then I'll draw from those next time I start making mistakes. Uh... swap it a couple of times after you do that. Everybody see that? I'm not doing anything with this middle finger, but it happens to be on that hand, so it's got to go somewhere. And if I move that finger outward, it's not going to look good on the camera. So let's uh, uh, let's let's leave that little middle finger down a little bit. We uh, we we don't want to upset somebody. Couple of little strokes there. You hear that? Then you're going to hit the two bottom strings open. Then you're going to go to the number four fret, number one string with your forefinger. And you're going to slide that up 
to your number seven fret. Still just stroking the two bottom strings, the number one and the number two. So let's do that together very slowly. That's what I'm doing is plucking it and sliding it. So I go, I pluck it, don't pluck them open, one and two. Then I put my finger down, my forefinger down on the number four fret, first string, and stroke it, and then stroke it one more time. You're gonna slide after you stroke that string. And then two more strokes with it down. And then it's gonna get tricky. Now, tricky if you're just learning how to do this kind of stuff. So let's, let's take it from the beginning and take it to where we just went. Everybody good there? Now sometimes I'll, I won't hit it twice, but sometimes I will. Okay? I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not that's fit. that fits good for you. Okay, one more time. Okay, everybody good? That's bite number one and bite number two. This is not a long song. But now it's going to get just a little more challenging. But if you have some guitar skill already, probably not going to be as challenging. But if you're new to it, I want to encourage you. You have a pause button. You have a, I don't know what you call it, but you can scoot the video back a little bit and watch it all over again. So we'll cover each one at least twice slowly. And uh, that will allow you to go back and kind of, kind of take a peek at it. And if you look on your YouTube settings... Uh, you'll be able to slow this video down to like quarter speed if you need to, okay? But I'm going to try to identify where my fingers are at all times. So taking it from that part where we went. Now we're on fret number three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that fret number eight? Three, six, three, four, five, six. Fret number seven. Fret number seven. And this is where it's going to get interesting. So you're going to skip this fret on the number one bottom string, and you're going and you're going to you're going to be utilizing a little box right here between strings one, two, and three. And and this is going to be interesting for you to work on. And you what you're going to do is uh, you can these hammer ons and hammer offs. We're going to do a hammer off. I don't know if I've ever even heard it called that. Maybe it's called the hammer off. That's what you're actually doing. I'll, I'll just say if this is, that, if that's a hammer on, that's got to be a hammer off, right? I did graduate high school. All right, now, uh, so let's do this. So it's, now we're going to go from the seventh fret and we're going to go to the ninth fret, number one string, and we're going to do this. We're going to leave our forefinger in place on the number seven fret, first string, and we're going to do a hammer on and a hammer off. We're only plucking that's those two bottom strings once. See that? 
And by the way, this Epiphone is very sensitive. Uh, one of the things that struck me about it after I got it into my hands, finally, this Inspired by Gibson stuff is just beyond cool, I'll tell you. All right. Your tendency, if you've not done this before, is going to be to, to do that. You don't want to do that. You want to do this. You don't have to pull your hand up. I'm just getting it out of the way so you know I'm not plucking it again. So you're doing a hammer on and a hammer off. Matter of fact, if you take that ring finger that you're hammering on to that ninth fret with and just ease it off, pull it a little bit. Not pull that string hard, but that's enough for you to Hear that? Hear that? Okay. So we're going to go. So we go. Now what now we've done the hammer on, hammer on. The hammer on pull off. Pull off. I think those are what those are called, pull offs. Not hammer offs, pull offs. I think I'd learn these terms, you know, but it's called a pull off. All right, hammer on, pull off. Now you're going to go to the number two string. You're in that same box. So you're on the ninth fret with your ring finger, and you're on the seventh fret, number two string, with your forefinger. So I'm going to take it from the number one string and go to the number two string. Hear that? It's just a pull off. I've got my ring finger pulling off to my forefinger on the number two string. And you can see where my fingers are at on the frets. If I can get my middle finger out of the way. I can't lift my little finger up if I put my middle finger down. There we go. All I'm doing is just hitting it and hammering, pulling it off. So it's... Okay. So I'm on the number three string, number nine fret. Right here. Okay, now I'm going to play this all the way up to that part. Everybody get that? Those hammer-ons and hammer-offs are very important that you're not plucking when you should be hammering on or hammering off or pulling off. That's a hammer-on. I'm throwing that little pinky finger down behind my ring finger on the number nine fret, number two string that I'm hammering on right here. But I'm doing it with my little finger. While I've got my ring finger on the number three string, number nine fret. That didn't sound good. Hear how I'm raking up? I'm hitting those, the number two and the number three string I'm raking from the number three, number two string to the number three string and incorporating both of those notes in one swipe. And the only thing that's happening is, is my little finger is hammering on right after I pluck number two and number three. 
Everybody hear that? See, it's not easy to not hit other strings. That's it. Now, let's go back and do this all the way up to that point again. Everybody ready? All right, here we go. Now, here's what we're going to do. Let's do it one more time. Now, we're on the number seven fret right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven number one string with our forefinger and we're gonna we're gonna pull up and then we're gonna go to the number nine fret to the twelfth fret number seven swipe number nine swipe Number nine, swipe again and slide, okay? Then we're going to repeat what we just did. Okay, so let's do that again together. I'll go, I'll go a lot slower. Let's do that again. Seven, nine, Swipe again and slide. Two more swipes. Then we're going to go back and do this again. Then we're going to go back to what we started with. Get that? Make a B7 and just pick up the number five and number one string. Then make an E chord, number one and number six string. And that's all there is to it. And that's what you call Noodling 101. Sitting around, messing around with things. I think what got me on this song was uh, there's so many things you can do with just uh, two, the number one and the number two string, okay? There's a lot of things you can do. You can, you can do things with that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to tell you I hear things. You guys will send a straight jacket after me. But I can hear, I can hear something when it starts brewing, I guess would be a good way to say it, when you're playing the guitar. I can't really describe that to you. I just can tell you that sometimes, uh, depending up, you know, if I get a setting in my head, you know, my wife and I love to go to the Ozarks and uh, in the Smoky Mountains as well. And in the very early mornings or deep in the evenings time, right before it gets dark, you know, you got that what looks like smoke kind of in the hills uh, and if somebody's got a fireplace going and you can see it from a distance from your cabin, it's pretty cool. I just love it. I could sit out there, get a glass of peach tea, and uh, uh, maybe put a find me a little nip somewhere to add to it, and and sit out there and uh, uh, give me a go find me a corn cob pipe, and I think I've died and gone to heaven. Okay, so that's what that kind of stuff reminds me of. Uh, just a simpler time. And simpler times are something that uh, I think they're gone for good uh, in the world. But uh, I was a very fortunate person. My my wife and I both grew up in a in a small town just east of Dallas called Mesquite, Texas. And 
We graduated high school in 1977. We were married before I graduated and uh, been married ever since. You know, grew up in a wonderful, wonderful uh, group of people that lived in that what was then a small town. It's not anymore. And uh, it was just a wonderful place to grow up uh, with uh, uh, people were for you. People wanted you to do well. I went to school with a group of people that to this day I think about them and, and miss them. Good group of people. Those are the kinds of things that it just it causes me to uh, noodle tunes like what you're hearing here, okay? Just a, 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 a more peaceful time. People didn't have cell phones. They didn't have pagers. You know, if they didn't get you on the house phone, they didn't get you. Uh, we didn't answer the phone during dinner time. Can you imagine somebody's cell phone ringing nowadays and they're not grabbing it and going, hold on a minute, you know? Uh, what would we do today if somebody lost their cell phone? I've seen people, I lost mine in Argentina one time, okay? So, I mean, I was down in, in uh, South America and I had gotten out of a vehicle at like 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning uh, to go into a store to get some coffee there in Argentina and I dropped my cell phone. It was it was between my legs in the seat and when I got out, I just, I never never thought about it and dropped it and and for 15 minutes after it dawned on me that I didn't have my cell phone, I was freaked out, and fortunately, I found it because it's one thing to lose your cell phone here in the United States if you live in the United States. It's another thing to lose it in another country. Uh, that was my lifeline, right? So, but simpler times, happier times, maybe, or not when I say happier times, I just mean a little more peaceful, a little more calm. Uh, today, I think... Uh, uh, you, you look at the schools today and those kinds of things, and kids are always trying to one-up each other. I did not grow up in an environment like that. All the kids I knew, uh, they could have cared less what kind of house you lived in or whether or not your pants had a pair, uh, pair of pants had a hole in them or your shoes were old. People didn't care about that kind of stuff. They, they were more interested in you. And I can't ever remember a classmate wanting me to do poorly. Uh, I just, uh, that that's not the world we're living in anymore. So this is a tool, in my opinion. And uh, when I've got this thing in my hands, I'm in a happier place. Love the guitar. Anyway, sorry for sidetracking there, but I'm not cutting that out of the video. I think it needs to be heard. All right, so let's do this together one more time. And this time, I'm going to add a bass note to it. You can add this bass note if you if you want to, and you can. But I wouldn't get in a hurry if you're new to this, okay? So let's do this again. We'll do it rather slowly. And you'll notice that the bass note hit at the hammer on. Now, the beautiful thing about YouTube, everybody, is you have a pause button. So I'm not going to make this a two-hour video. You have the basics, the fundamentals. We slowed down on everything. If you need to go back and review this and you like this and want to learn how to play it, go ahead. To my knowledge, it has nobody's name on it. So write your name on it. <laughs> um, but maybe this was uh, kind of a start of what I, what I would like to put out as noodling series, where we just get the guitar down. And we kind of noodle things. And we may do a noodle, a fresh noodle. Just crank the camera up and see if we can crank something out together. Okay? Hope you enjoyed it. I always enjoy doing this. I don't think uh, I've enjoyed anything nearly as much uh, since uh, uh, back when I had a small recording studio. I love doing that stuff. And so I believe I've just found me a new hobby because uh, I enjoy this. Now, hopefully, once again, I think I've said it before, I'll try to get a little better camera. But I think you can see the guitar well enough and uh, can communicate well enough, hopefully, where your fingers go, that this gets rather, uh, it's not difficult uh, to try to follow. So, and that's my goal. So if I'm going to help somebody get a little bit better on the guitar, I'm not that great myself. 
Uh, but uh, if if you're if you feel like you're not quite that good, then maybe I can help you get to that place where you're at least that good, right? Uh, I do this. I play guitar for a different reason than maybe a lot of people play guitar. I don't know. But I play it for me. Uh, I play it for my own enjoyment. I play it for a variety of reasons. and uh, But they're very small, those reasons. At least I think most people would think they were probably small reasons. But they're important to me. And I enjoy it. I can't imagine life without playing a guitar anymore. I, I struggle to even believe that I put the guitar down for a while. But I couldn't do a lot of these things. So you reach a place and you feel like you can't go any further. A lot of people will put it down. Don't do that. Work on that talent. Bring it out. Do something with it, even if it's right there in your own home. Uh, I will spare you singing, at least at the moment. Anyway, with all that said, I hope things are going well for you, as well as they can be under the current environment. Uh I would say no matter how bad things get, take care of your friends, take care of your family. We'll see you next time. God bless.